Hi I'm JAWS for Windows Screen Reader, I run on the PC platform. Windows computers can be bought very cheaply but you have to pay at least £99 a year for the latest version of JAWS. And I'm VoiceOver for Mac, I work on Apple desktops and laptops and do the same sort of thing as my good friend JAWS. Apple hardware is expensive, and I mean really, really expensive but unlike Windows, I come at no extra cost to any user. You don't need to pay for updates, and you don't need to install me, you can turn me on using any Mac. So which of us is better? Well, I am of course. No, I am. Let's not argue. Okay then, so the question is, which screen reader should you use? Let's find out. Welcome to Blind Girl Vlogs. It's a different sort of vlog today. It's it's the first of a podcast as well as a vlog cast, isn't it? So you're watching on youtube.com forward slash blind girl vlogs and it's the first podcast. And who am I? You are him indoors. Yeah, that's an identity crisis I'm having. I really don't know who I am. And I'm her indoors. Her indoors. It was her reference to Minder. So look, if you're listening in, this is the first of Siobhan's podcast and videos. And she's asked me to join in and talk a little bit, haven't you? I have. But you're not going to see me today. Not just you. Why, why can you not see me? Just want to explain for anybody tuning in for the first time. Because you're hiding behind the camera. No, but why are you not going to see me? Oh, That's because I'm others. blind. I'm blind. How blind are you? I'm very blind. How blind? I am totally blind and I have prosthetic eyes. Exactly. So, so you're going to question it in the comments and you're going to get a shock. Many have. You are. <laughs> right, what are we talking about today then? This is this your first podcast and YouTube. We're talking about screen readers and JAWS. And how and blind people use computers. How blind people use computers, how I use computers, how you use computers, and maybe how you guys use computers. It's it's all happening here. It is. Now, the, th the thing is, we've got some demonstrations, so stick with us. If you like the content, by the way, I should say an awful lot of people watching now and listening are not subscribing, so do subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have some practical demonstrations on the way. But I just wanted to answer this as well as did you, because so many people ask, particularly on your TikTok, that's right. You have a TikTok channel, don't you? I do. They say, I'm, how can I'm you use this it. computer? They say you're blind. You can't use it. And they say that because... I'm using a, well, computer. No, they say it because they don't understand. Oh, they don't understand disability. They don't understand blindness. So I'm just raising awareness and educating people that actually blind people can use technology with assistance. Okay, so we're going to have a look at a few different screen readers. We're going to demonstrate you two screen readers, and we're going to tell you how you can get some for free as well. Everybody likes some free stuff. We all like yeah, a bonus, right? We do. We like a, I like a bonus. I, I like a freebie. I, I like a nice bonus. Um, so we're going to be talking about two main screen readers today. One is JAWS for Windows. And what, what platform does that operate on? I know, I know the computer said at the beginning, but just tell us. Microsoft? Not, well, yes, actually, but also anything to do with Windows PC. 10 or oh, Windows, yes, yeah. anything to do with the PC. Um, and how much does that cost? £99, roughly a year. For home users, and it for costs more than £800 for a professional yeah. copy. But it's brilliant. So that, here's a spoiler. They're all brilliant, right? They all open up access to people who are blind or low vision. Yeah. So tell me about your uh, screen reader journey. When did you start using screen readers? So I remember using my first ever experience was with Supernova back when I was in my early teens. And Supernova is um, another software um, uh, screen reader. But I then came across JAWS um, for Windows when I was in my mid-teens and I preferred it actually. Supernova um, is a, it, it's, it's a screen reader but it also, also enlarged the yeah. screen. Now at the time you had very poor partial sights did the enlargement help you? Um, it did, but again, it, I became quite tired after a while. Hence the reason I, I liked having the um, the voice to enable me to be able to read those long sections of text when, when you're learning and studying at school. Um, but for those shorter kind of clips of information, I, I was able to kind of uh, go through, you know, some of my vision. Yeah, and so the, oh. first, the first thing I used to use uh, and I was really rubbish. It sounds like a similar story. It was called Luna for Windows when I had fairly poor partial sight. Gave me a terrible headache. And it wasn't for a few years later, I started using something called HAL 5, which let oh. DOS, disk operating system, read to you. Wow. So look, we're going to come back and talk screen readers. But I think uh, we've recorded a couple of practical examples. I think we should travel back in time and 
you know, let's let you show people how you use JAWS for Windows. Oh, welcome, welcome. Long time no see. Well, about 20 odd years for me. Come and see what I'm doing. What we're going to do is send an email using Microsoft Outlook and JAWS. Scroll in, untitled dash message left parent HTML right parent to edit type of text. Sean Dilly, Sean dot Dilly dot org dot enter. T E S T. Test dash message blank, blank, blank. Now I'm in the body of the email. Just going to send him a little message. H O U T H space. Notice that it's reading every letter to me, which is what I have it set up because I prefer it that way. So if I make a mistake, I can actually correct it there and then. You can navigate this email by using different shortcut keys. So I'm going to go to the top of the email, up a file, hi. Uh, which says hi. So I'm going to go down using the arrow keys. This is a test as I'm doing a misspelled YouTube video showing how a blind person uses a laptop and computer when they are blind or visually impaired. Dot, dot. So then it reads it out to me, but if I want to go and correct a spelling mistake or capitalize a word, I can actually navigate it using control right arrow. Test. A. Test. As. I'm. Doing. A. Misspelled YouTube. Showing. With misspelled YouTube. And there it tells me that there's a, a miss, there's a, a spelling mistake. YouTube. It's not a spelling mistake. They probably want me to capitalize the T. Showing how a blind person uses a laptop. So let's just have a listen to the email and then I can send it if I'm happy with it. Hi, this is a test as I'm doing a misspelled YouTube video showing how a blind person uses a laptop and computer when they are blind or visually impaired. Dot, dot. Blank, I go this with high dash light how tech really does assist those people who can't see. Ah, so again, I've noticed a type of mistake, so I'm just going to go and correct that using control right arrow. T H O U T A T. I thought this was high dash light how tech really does assist those people who can't see. I'm now going to do a shortcut key, which is Alt S to send. And you can do all sorts of things like this. Browse the internet. You can navigate the website by pressing H for headings, for example. A top stories heading level two. And as you heard, top stories heading. News headlines heading level two link. Sports headlines heading level two link. Around the UK heading level two link. Which is a really quick and nifty way of being able to access a website without having to read all of the information that you don't necessarily want. Heading level three link society has just accepted dead women. So let's just go into that. Enter. Home dash BBC news. The Duke of Cambridge says he has yet to speak to his brother Prince Harry following the Oprah interview. Back to ourselves. In the future. I too wish you wouldn't go on about all that stuff. It gives me a terrible temporal headache. I already don't know what day of the week is. You no, know. you don't. <laughs> uh, that was Jaws for Windows. If you stick with us, guys, we're going to tell you how you can get hold of something that is... Uh, free. Uh, yeah, it is free, actually, or you can make a small donation to them. It's free or very nearly free, so stick with us. And that's not going to be the Mac. We're going to tell you about something that you can use Ooh. on a PC Ooh, for yeah. free or very nearly free, whatever. Jaws, why is that good for you beyond opening up access? I like to be able to be independent and be in control of what I search for. And when I search, for example, going online and looking up, well, what shopping items I can get, looking at clothes items, staying in touch with friends and family through social media. It gives me a whole host of things that I can actually do without having to rely on people. So, Jaws, I love you. Now that Jaws, actually, uh, what Jaws, because it's actually got a picture of a shark as well. Yeah. In reference yang, to the yang, film. Yang. <laughs> yang 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 yang. No, I was like <laughs> pretending to bite. <laughs> you don't have to pretend, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but, yeah. But uh, it but Jaws stands for Job Access, access with, with speech. speech. So, uh, and it used to when you installed it is Welcome to Job Access with Speech. Press Enter to continue. Blast from the past. Wow, that's uh, that was scarily good. Yeah. That impression, and what it meant is being totally blind or low vision. You can put, in that day, you used to be able to put a CD into the drive. Yes. Now you don't need to. No. You could <gasps> access the screen reader and install it on your, your own. own. Wow. That really opened it. up doors to an independence. Um, now, it, because a little later, I'm going to have a look at Mac voiceover, but I actually use JAWS more than I use the Mac. Why is that? A um, couple of reasons, actually. Yeah. Right. The, the, the only reason I really use the Mac is for Final Cut video editing. So... Uh, what we'll do is we'll make sure we show you a little bit of that as well, just briefly. Um, and also, I like the fact that obviously on a Mac that the software is included as part of any Mac that you buy. So you, you, like, you get well. very I good think... Macs now for a grand, which is a lot of yeah. money. Considering... It's universal design. I like that, though. Out of the box. Yeah. Now, the, the things you can buy a cheap PC for £200, £300 are the same in dollars. Uh, and you will spend $1,000 on the cheapest but they're very good Macs they're really good Macs aren't they um, so you spend oh, yeah. that money on it mm. um, but I think you know 
it, for me, the reason I like Jaws is um, it's no secret my day job is in broadcasting. I know there are some people who give views on uh, how good the broadcast kit is, is, is and whatever, and we take those under advisement if our friend is with us. Um, but, you know, that is my day job. That is how I pay the bills. That's how I buy stupid cameras and stuff, don't we? You know, things like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So when I'm reading scripts out, and I do that for a broadcast organisation, um, like for all sorts of platforms. Such a skill, though. Oh, you, I have but, to jump in and you say have it's to such listen. a skill. We haven't told them what the skill is yet. No, but you but have to I, listen I'm to Jaws. Preempting. You have to listen to Jaws in that robotic voice, you know, the one that we heard Siobhan using mm. rather than at the beginning. Um, and you have to kind of give it some human expression. And with Mac voiceover, because they're both brilliant screen readers, we said that there are no bad ones here. It's not PC versus Mac. They're both great. Um, you're going to be happy with either. But I don't find Mac voiceover quite as responsive than a fast PC running Jaws. Yeah. So I'm kind of I'm saying things either live on the air or broadcast and I'm saying it as I'm hearing it. So you need it in real time. More than real time. Yeah. I listen to it really fast, fast and I split yeah. my sentences up. And when I do with that with a Mac, there's just that. It's really hard to explain. It's infinitesimally small. There's a tiny bit of lag that wouldn't matter in any other scenario. And that's why I'd, I've been doing the test that I know that you're going to introduce in a minute. So just, just a quick one. So when you say split up sentences, how mm. many words? Would it be like two or three sentences and then you'd repeat it? or Two or three words. No, it sort of uh, depends. Sorry, so two or three words. It, sorry. I'll tell you what, it depends. Um, sometimes it is, but that can really be quite stilting as well. Mm. Uh, and I find that when I'm recording something, it always takes me just that, you know, if I'm recording something, I, I might stop and start a few times. Yeah. If you're live, you just do it. It's normally half a sentence. Uh, so okay. if it's the Prime Minister told the House of Commons, that would probably stay as it is. Yes. Uh, um, you know, for example, if it's, if it's um, uh, you know, if, if, it, if there's a name there that's trickier to pronounce, maybe a name I haven't heard before, then I might just have that name. Uh, you know, but you, it's it's a skill to split it up where you need to because mm. um, if you split it up too soon and you don't include the next couple of words, then it can be all stilted because yeah. you can say, uh, the Prime Minister said he would see you on Tuesday and then you go to the next line morning and then that sounds stilted so you yeah. have to kind oh, of work out yeah the prime minister said i might then move on to the next line there okay oh so then it kind of follows on from what you're saying yeah, yeah. I, I just think and i have I it really fast as well we have it much faster than you're hearing in these demos by the way yeah and i and i think because i want you to be able to understand what we're actually demonstrating and showing because someone said to me you have it so fast it sounds like the chipmunks uh yeah i mean maybe a bit lower than the chipmunks yeah maybe a bit lower Simon, Alvin, and Theodore. <laughs> yeah, I Hey, so it. listen, just before, just before, yeah. just before Siobhan introduces uh, this, and bear with us, remember, we're going to tell you how you can get a free one that you can use on a cheaper PC, and why you would want to do it and why you wouldn't. Um, just before we do that, please hit the subscribe if you like the content. If you're listening on the podcast as well, head on over to youtube.com forward oh, slash Blind Girl Vlogs. That's the one. So you've got a little bit of an introduction to make because I can't introduce my own voice. Oh, I wanted to. I wanted him to do that though. I wanted him to give himself that opportunity. Yeah. So Sean's going to show you how he uses a Mac with voiceover. So let's go and take a look. Well, hello there. For those who are watching this on YouTube and able to see it, you're not going to see my face. I'm going to be off camera on this occasion. So there's lots of the laptop and my hands going on there. Uh, don't bother. Stop sniggering at the back. Um, the Mac is a fantastic bit of kit. I, uh, you know, think the, the main reason that I would use it over, say, a PC is uh, for editing video. And that's the only thing because I also love PCs. If we go into Outlook. Outlook. In subject. Test. Set now in test. And inbox, we've got Siobhan's email here. Space. End of text. Now, whereas with you are yours, on a text it, it would land you straight into the text. Uh, what you have to do with voiceover is you have to land yourself in there by interacting. So there's it's a bit of a complicated key combination. Out of web, web content. In web content. And it thinks the email is web content, but that's fine. Space. Hi, space. This is a test as I'm doing a YouTube video showing how a blind person uses a laptop and computer when they are blind or visually impaired. I thought this would highlight how tech really does assist those people who can't see. Just like George, you can go into your emails and you can... Uh, I thought this would highlight. move word by word. How tech really does assist, and we can re we can reply as well. So there are similar but different shortcut keys. So I do Command R to reply. I believe no. I haven't really done one of these, and I will say Edit text uh, dear D dear, uh, dear Siobhan Siobhan comma new line. And we've got the screen reader set quite slow for you on this occasion. I'd normally have it quite a bit faster. Uh, 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 your uh, uh, testing. 
Why don't we stick here? Uh, are people who are watching watching hitting the subscribe button? Button. It's an interesting question because an awful lot of people watching now aren't, and you should do to support Siobhan's content. Videos like this take a little bit of time to stick away, but we do Command and S. Save. Just saves it. That doesn't work on a Mac, so we're going to hit Command and mess. Send Enter, and that has sent it. Now, I prefer PCs and JAWS for uh, Outlook, uh, but for video editing, you really can't do anything as well as with a Mac, in my opinion. So, using um, VoiceOver with Mac and shortcut keys, we open up a very visual medium to me. So, for instance, um, Events Command group. 1, we can land into Final events for videos we've window. recorded. One of 43 selected. External, there's one. Right, group. okay. So I, I recorded a little video for a work thing. Internal 2. Uh, External, there's Fairly recently. Um, so let's try and find that. I can, for instance, hit my icon. Set key. range start. And you can hear that starts where you're clipping. Uh, there we are. There's a full start, so we can hit our eye again. Set range start. And space bar. We're going to stop it there because I'm not really editing it. I'm going to hit O to mark the outrange. Set range end. Now that we've marked our out key, we'll hit E. Append to storyline. To land it in the um, uh, storyline. <laughs> VoiceOver's just announced it. We can hit Command 2. Project timeline. And Layout we can come area. into that. And Beginning. we can Final Cut Pro has go into our main video edit. Now, the point is, um, this screen reader here. I find actually it's probably not as responsive when it comes to reading scripts and things if you've got to read at the same time as you're listening. Uh, but it's pretty good, it has to be said. So with that being said, let's Outlook. whip Inbox out Finder. of all of these Desktop. things and say that a little bit like JAWS, it opens uh, the computer to you. Things work a little bit differently. You know, for instance, Macs have, um, you know, a dock. Dock. So you can hit a dock there. Open. Safari. You can Three of 14. go to Safari, Finder, which is desktop. the internet. Uh, I think, you know, obviously we, we caught, BBC we caught Siobhan going Coac over news. a little bit of news on online. Menu. So let's do a little bit of the same thing, okay? Home. Home. So, home. BBC News. In home. So BBC. unlike JAWS that lands you in the web page, you, know you, you, have to, um, you have to interact Heading with level it and do these shortcut keys. So it's a little bit more involved, I would say. Uh, we link to give you the best keys. Yeah, link, head, link, link. Prince William. Media caption. Prince William says royal family is very much not racist. End of. The Duke of Cambridge has said the royals are very much not a racist family in his first comments after accusations by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex in a TV interview. So you can see you whichever screen reader you're using, you're pretty much going to be able to send emails and you're pretty much going to be able to browse the web. Right then, I think it's my turn to hand back to... Well, we don't have a studio. Well, neither is Piers Morgan at the moment. Let's not go there. We're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. Um, so, your your observations? I think it's really good, actually. And, and I did dabble with Mac a little bit and voiceover. Um, but I, I didn't really give it enough time to, to kind of do all the things that you were doing on there. And I think it's really interesting, actually, listening to you kind of showing and demonstrating it's actually pretty simplistic once you know what you're doing. Once you kind of have one screen reader under your belt, it's kind of like pretty much similar, isn't it? I thought it was yeah. really good. It really did highlight how you can use it and what you use it for. I find, So there's pros and cons. To the Mac, I find a lot less um, uh, involved in some applications. I love that you can use Final Cut Video Editor on it. Yeah. Okay, That, for me, is its biggest selling point. I think it's a bit more of a faff in some ways. So, oh, excuse me. I think... <laughs> No, we're leaving Should that we in there. That in? We're leaving sorry, that had, in there. I had a sip of Diet Coke. That's we're leaving that in there. We're not editing it. I, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. I really apologise. I'd normally edit it, but we're on one camera today. Um, so, look. I, <laughs> it's Carry live. On. It's sort it's, of it's recorded yeah. live. Carry okay. On. Uh, so, yeah, it's a bit more of a faff. So, for, for instance, if you go onto a web page with JAWS, it just lands you in there. And then you can use your various... Which is why I love it. Shortcut yeah. keys. And if you want to get into the bits at the top... You'd hit Alt to get into the menus. With a Mac, you kind of have to interact with different parts of the screen and and sort of through the keyboard tell it roughly where you want to be. And it's a bit of an extra step. Yeah. But I hugely, I hugely respect that Mac have that built in. We're going to talk oh, yeah, in a minute definitely. about the Windows version as well that is, is slightly uh, built in. So we'll talk about all of those things. But I, I think for me, 
Yeah. Mac voiceover. If if you're using it for home use and you don't use any super complicated systems, and... systems, then I think ultimately um, I'd probably learn the Mac. Really? I'd probably learn the Mac. So you wouldn't bother with Windows and JAWS and... Me personally, no, I need it. And that's yeah. why I say it's oh, personal. Oh, yeah, cost. That's, it's, very, so, it's very person you know, focused on what they want well, to no, I th- achieve, I suppose. Yeah, but you could learn either. But for me, I, I think the reason I need JAWS, beyond the reasons I've said, is where I work, we use all sorts of broadcast systems and really heavy duty stuff that doesn't normally work with screen readers because it's very niche and it's not yeah. really been made accessible as it should be. And so they have to get specialists in to do scripting, almost coding. They They sort of. They're ethical hackers in a way. They have to hack into it and make Jaws work with it. Ooh, and there are people like that can it. do that much more than than with a Mac. So, I just like sticking to what I know. Uh, yeah. Which is Jaws and Windows. I've known it for many, many years. But I use both. I and and like, yeah. do you know what? If, put, if like anybody, you say, yeah. If anybody tuned in and thought, well, this is going to be, she uses Windows, he uses a Mac. Now, I, I use Windows more than I use a Mac because it's mm. my work computer. But I can sit there with a PC and a Mac next to each other and I can switch between them. And they are different, but it's just, it's second It depends nature on what now. you want as well and what you're using it for, so. Yeah, so yeah. I would always edit video on a Mac. On a Mac? I wouldn't even yeah. know how to on a PC. And of choice, I would edit a, a Word document on PC with Jaws because I just prefer that experience. Yeah. So, um, we promised to talk about other screen readers. Um, and there are two, aren't there, that I'd like to talk about. Yes. So, in fairness, some people might be screaming I'd be no! screaming. Yeah, no, you haven't mentioned Windows Narrator. That's just like Mac VoiceOver. Yeah. It isn't, it isn't. Okay. Yep. So it's just like Mac VoiceOver because it's included with Windows. Um, Which again and, is brilliant, I think. Um, yeah, but <laughs> stand by. Um, yeah, so, I'm so, trying to be positive. Let's start with the positive. <laughs> yeah, well, the positive is that yeah. it's included with Windows. And it is. maybe in that sense, you could say it's sort of a bit like VoiceOver. Um, it's not, though, because it's... And this is honest opinion based on fact. Yeah. It's not... It doesn't do the same sort of level of functionality at all. No. Oh, no. So um, it's there's, getting better. There's no comparison. Yeah. It is genuinely getting better. And you can install Windows uh, on your own, pretty much, yeah. using that. And to access Windows Narrator, you hit Windows and U, mm-hmm. and it will start talking. And then you turn it on. It's brilliant. It's brilliant that Windows and Microsoft are doing that. So, guys, if you're doing that, mm. we love your accessibility. You do so much with... Oh, so much. With with so many mobile apps as well. I was just going to say, you took the words out of my mouth. But uh, for another vlog, I think, another podcast. <laughs> Subscribe, by the way. Um, but I, I think it's, it's not there in terms of the functionality it needs to be. But... There's progress. Well, yeah, but There's do you time. know what is? Do you know what's really close to JAWS? Is it going to be NVDA? Yeah, NVDA, oh. that stands for Non-Visual Desktop Access. And that's called Open Source Software. Do you know why it's called Open Source Software? No, but you're going to tell me. Because the person who did it, they had a bottle of ketchup and they opened... No, it's not. <laughs> oh, um, for goodness. <laughs> open Source means that all of its source code um, is published and people can edit it. Um, if they know what they're doing, don't you dare. Don't you... Get, get away. I've looked in your browsing history. Oh, yeah. Ri- oh, have most, you now? Wasn't the most disturbing thing. <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, <laughs> yeah. But With source as well. It, no, anyway. They say it's free, and it is. You can download it and use it for free. But you can They donate. also say that it's free because there are countries around the world where people simply cannot afford any desktop access. And so they sort of invite you to donate what you can. So, um, Which I, th- I think, you know, is, is absolutely brilliant that... You know they are having it for free for those people who who don't have the funds. Um, and if you like if you like it, why wouldn't you donate something? If there you will can. be tight people watching. I'm not about people who can't afford I, it. That's yeah, different. I just There'll think be that's how people. they develop and that's how they grow. There will be tight people watching now who have downloaded it and not paid. And look, if you can't afford it, that's different. That's okay, if you can't yeah. afford it, that's why it's there for free. Nobody should feel guilty about that. No, absolutely not. If you're someone who goes out and orders 26 takeaways and. I don't know, 46 chicken nuggets on a Saturday just because, then you probably could afford to donate a five, couldn't you? So, yeah. So, and if you like a product, then why wouldn't you? You know, it, it kind of, it does make... Well, it's make a few the... fewer chicken nuggets, I suppose. No. Anyway, no, let's not. <laughs> um, so, so look... Um, but it does help the um, accessibility and, and yeah. you know... The if you're a screen reader user, download it. NVDA, donate a fiver. If you can do a five, just do a fiver, okay? Um, donate it because Jaws costs £99 a, a year yeah. for home and students. Uh, and I say it costs more than eight hundred pounds if you buy a new copy. Uh, although yes. Sight and Sound do discounts occasionally, by the way, keep an eye on that Sight and Sound. If you Google that, they, they do, do discounts actually. Yeah, um, and it's, it's not a particular endorsement point. of any company, no. but they do do that. 
and it's worth looking at. And I'm not sponsored by any of these companies mentioned, by the way. Yeah, subtle hint. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're not. That's the point. Uh, and then no, but I think it's it's only fair to to kind of like you yeah. know give a give a brief overview of all um, the screen readers that kind of I'm sure there must be some that we've not thought of because well, there must probably, be one for Linux. Are. There's probably probably a few, but actually put them in the comments. If so anybody know Google Chrome? You know Chromebooks. Mm. What screen reader did they use? Is it Talkback? Can anybody put that you in know, the comments I don't below? Know. Yeah, put it in the comments. Let I've not know. used it. And, and Linux. I what's that one called? I think yeah. it's there's one built in. So, firstly, I hope we've answered the question, how does a blind person use a screen reader? We've both shown you different platforms. Yeah. Let um, us know which one you prefer, actually, as well. If you use it. If I mean, you, you can it, yeah. say which one you prefer, but you've only what seen do you like the, yeah, Well, actually, if, if, even if you are sighted, what voice do you prefer? Mine? Well, the, well what, you know, in terms of the computers, of course. No. Do you, know, <laughs> you know the voice you used in your demonstration rather than the human-sounding voice at the beginning? Yeah. That's called eloquence, and I think that's originally from nuance, isn't it? But it's I eloquence. So, yeah. And I still prefer that voice, particularly for reading scripts, because that's the one that's really responsive. Yeah, I But prefer. it doesn't sound human. No, for reading I like emails, the one that I doesn't like sound human. human. Uh, well, but that's because we're probably used to it. Yeah. And in my case, it works better for and the And I script. have it really fast as well. Yeah. So I can probably read a book. I quite like the human voice. Fiona. A minute. <laughs> yeah. I have Fiona. Um, so you can, you can do that, okay. <laughs> and screen readers do open up a world. You like, for example, you can scan text in an OCR reader. Oh, yes. And letters documents books oh it's just it's yeah i get so excited oh, technology right, and down, accessibility down, 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 down. is fabulous so we hope we've answered that it's a bit of an involved one but we hope you're still with us <laughs> we say this on on youtube so if you're not on youtube and you're listening to the podcast youtube.com forward slash blind girl vlogs how do people follow you on twitter you can find me at blind girl vlogs what like the same branding the and everything same brand and everything Hang on a minute, yeah. you've and got Instagram. some branded music. I can hear your music. Ooh. Instagram, how do they find you on Instagram? At Blind Girl Vlogs. TikTok. Blind Girl Vlogs. Here on YouTube? Where we're, I mean, if people aren't on YouTube, over at YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash Blind Girl Vlogs. Subscribe to support the content. It really does make a difference. Pop your questions in the comments below. And and I think we should have few, less him indoors and just her indoors. Tell me in the comments if you agree with that one. If you watch to this point, please use the word microphone in the comments below on YouTube or head over to YouTube.com forward slash Blind Girl Vlogs. And, Until uh, next time. Subscribe. Bye. Bye. Subscribe. Bye. Subscribe. Subscribe. Bye. Bye. Subscribe.